Hello friends! Today we will cover the world to screen function. I have to warn you, this will not be easy. There will be no code but instead a lot of math. Also, I have to say just because this method works for this game does not mean it's the best option for your target. There are other methods involving matrix multiplication, namely perspective or view and projection matrix, and they differ depending on the game's graphics API. I will link additional resources in the description. Instead of matrix multiplications, I decided to show you more or less what happens during those multiplications step by step, because I think that's more easy to follow. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for reasons attack. All right, first let's cover some basic things. We are in the 3D game space, called the world space. In our case, the Z axis points up and the X and Y axis span the plane we walk on, so to speak. Inside this space, the camera has a location and it's oriented in some way. And we have locations or points for the entities we want to draw. What we want is take those 3D points and somehow transform them into 2D points on a plane. The 2D plane is of course our screen. Here the origin is in the bottom left corner, with x going to the right and y up. The so-called look at vector is a vector in the world space which starts at the camera location and points at whatever the camera is currently looking at. Usually this vector is normalized, meaning its length is 1. So if we look down, the vector values are 0, 0, minus 1, and if we are looking all the way up, the vector is 0, 0, 1. This information will help us find the vector in memory in the next video. From the perspective of our screen, this vector starts at the center of our screen and points into the screen. We also have two field of view angles. One spanning across the xy plane and one normal to that plane. They define how far up, down, left and right things are drawn onto the screen. Usually the x field of view angle is stored in memory and we can calculate the other one by dividing through the width of our screen and multiplying by the height. Next we have two more angles. One is called chaw. It's the angle between the x axis and the vector, for instance our look at vector. We can get its value with the a 10 2 function, taking the vector's x and y values. The other one is called pitch. The pitch angle is the angle between the xy plane and the vector. And we can get this value by applying the asyn function to the set value of the vector. Okay, this was a lot of information already, but how does it help us? Well, if we get the chaw and pitch angle of an entity relative to our look at vector, then we know how far to the left or right, as well as up or down, that entity is relative to the center of our screen. This step is referred to as the conversion from world to camera space or world to view space. Now back to the chaw and pitch angle. I did draw these angles for our look at vector, but we also have to do the same for the vector between the camera and the target. We get that vector by subtracting the target location from the camera location. Now that we have all these angles, the angles we are interested in are the pitch and chaw of the target with respect to the camera. We can get those simply by subtracting the camera chaw from the object chaw and the camera pitch from the object pitch. Let's call these angles relative chaw and relative pitch, because they are relative to the camera. Currently, the relative chaw angle can be anything from minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi. So basically, two whole circles. This doesn't make too much sense. So what we can do is add 2 pi to the angle if it is smaller than minus pi and subtract 2 pi if it's larger than pi. By doing so, we don't change the location of the point. We just replace going over 180 degrees in one direction by going less than 180 degrees into the other one and end up at the same location. So now the range of the relative chaw angle is from minus pi to pi. A quick side note, if you are familiar with this subject, what you probably expect now is the perspective divide. This is not what we are going to do here. Not exactly anyways. The relative chaw is already the inverse tangent of what we would get from the perspective divide. This means that we have values which correspond to a curved projection surface. I don't know if a curved projection surface is a typical thing, or it's just a thing in Halo, 
Or maybe I understood something wrong, not sure, feel free to correct me. Anyways, let's finally get to the X position on our screen. As I said, by using the relative angles, we are now already in the view space. At the center of our screen, the relative jaw angle is zero. If we go to the left, the value goes negative, and if we go to the right, the value becomes positive. As I just mentioned, it ranges from minus pi to pi. What we want is that it's minus one in case we are as far to the left as we can see, and it's one if we look all the way to the right. We can do this by dividing the relative jaw angle by half of our field of view angle. Now in case the relative jaw angle is as large as the field of view angle, it's minus one or one depending on the direction. Nice. Next thing to do is transform this range of minus one to one to a range of zero to one. We can simply do this by adding one and dividing by two. Now we have x values between zero and one. What we really want though is values between zero and the width of our screen. The solution is simple, just multiply the jaw angle by the width of our screen. But what happens if the relative jaw angle is bigger than the field of view angle? Well in that case the x value is either smaller than zero or larger than the width of our screen. We can check for such values and just not draw them. Alright, now all this math stuff wasn't exactly simple was it? But here's a bit of good news. If you understood how this all worked, then getting the y position is actually simple. Instead of the relative jaw angle, we now use the relative pitch angle. This time we divide by the y field of view. As I mentioned in the beginning, we can get the y field of view simply by dividing by the width and multiplying by the height of the screen. Or since the aspect ratio is the width divided by the height, we can also just divide the x field of view by the aspect ratio and get the same result. In any case, now again we have values between minus one and one. As long as the relative angle is smaller than the field of view. So we can do the same scaling as before. Add one, divide by two and multiply by the height of the screen. If you are still watching, thank you. If you did not understand everything, that's fine. I just wanted you to get an idea of how it works. Next time we are back to coding, I promise. Until then friends, stay safe, talk to you soon.